The Special Air Service SAS, is a special forces unit of the British Army. It was founded as a regiment in 1941 by David Sterling and in 1950, it was reconstituted as a corps. The unit specializes in a number of roles including counterterrorism, hostage rescue, direct action, and covert reconnaissance. Much of the information about the SAS is highly classified, and the unit is not commented on by either the British government or the Ministry of Defense due to the secrecy and sensitivity of its operations. The Corps currently consists of the 22 Special Air Service Regiment, the regular component, as well as the 21 Special Air Service Regiment, Reserve, and the 23 Special Air Service Regiment, Reserve, which are reserve units, all under the operational command of United Kingdom Special Forces, UKSF. Its sister unit is the Royal Navy's Special Boat Service, which specializes in maritime counterterrorism. Both units are under the operational control of the Director Special Forces. The Special Air Service traces its origins to 1941 and the Second World War. It was reformed as part of the Territorial Army in 1947, named the 21st Special Air Service Regiment. The 22nd Special Air Service Regiment, which is part of the regular army, gained fame and recognition worldwide. After its televised rescue of all but two of the hostages held during the 1980 Iranian Embassy Siege. Iranian Embassy Siege The Iranian Embassy Siege took place from April 30th to May 5, 1980, after a group of six armed men stormed the Iranian Embassy on Prince's Gate in South Kensington, London. The gunmen, Iranian Arabs campaigning for sovereignty of Khuzestan province, took 26 people hostage, including embassy staff, several visitors, and a police officer who had been guarding the embassy. They demanded the release of prisoners in Khuzestan, and their own safe passage out of the United Kingdom. The British government quickly decided that safe passage would not be granted and a siege ensued. Subsequently, police negotiators secured the release of five hostages in exchange for minor concessions, such as the broadcasting of the hostage-takers' demands on British television. By the sixth day of the siege the gunmen were increasingly frustrated at the lack of progress in meeting their demands. That evening, they killed a hostage and threw his body out of the embassy. The Special Air Service SAS a special forces regiment of the British Army, initiated Operation Nimrod to rescue the remaining hostages, abseiling from the roof and forcing entry through the windows. During the 17-minute raid, they rescued all but one of the remaining hostages, and killed five of the six hostage-takers. The sole remaining gunmen served 27 years in British prisons. The operation brought the SAS to the public eye for the first time, and bolstered the reputation of Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher's government. The SAS was quickly overwhelmed by the number of applications it received from people inspired by the operation, and experienced greater demand for its expertise from foreign governments. The building, damaged by fire during the assault, was not reopened until 1993. Second World War The Special Air Service was a unit of the British Army during the Second World War that was formed in July 1941 by David Sterling. Sir Archibald David Sterling, November 15, 1915 to November 4, 1990, was a Scottish officer in the British Army, a mountaineer, and the founder and creator of the Special Air Service SAS. He saw active service during the Second World War until he was captured and spent the rest of the war in captivity as a prisoner of war. David Sterling was awarded a Distinguished Service Order and was also awarded the Order of the British Empire. Sterling was commissioned into the Scots Guards on July 24, 1937. In June 1940, he volunteered for the new No. 8 Commando under Lt. Col. Robert Laycock, which became part of Force Z, later named Lay Force. On February 1, 1941, Lay Force sailed for the Middle East in support of the capture of Rhodes, but were soon disbanded after suffering heavy casualties in the Battle of Crete and the Battle of the Litani River. Sterling remained convinced that due to the mechanized nature of war, a small team of highly trained soldiers with the advantage of surprise could attack several targets from the desert in a single night. Believing that taking his idea up the chain of command was unlikely to work, Sterling decided to go straight to the top. On crutches following a parachuting accident, he stealthily entered Middle East headquarters in Cairo, under, through, or over a fence, in an effort to see Commander-in-Chief, Middle East Command General Sir Claude Auchinleck. Spotted by guards, Sterling abandoned his crutches and entered the building, only to come face to face with an officer with whom he had previously fallen out. 
Retreating rapidly, he entered the office of the Deputy Chief of Staff, Major General Neil Ritchie. Sterling explained his plan to Ritchie, immediately after which Ritchie persuaded Auchinleck to allow Sterling to form a new Special Operations Unit. The unit was given the deliberately misleading name L Detachment, Special Air Service Brigade to reinforce Dudley Clark's deception of a parachute brigade existing in North Africa. Brigadier Dudley Rangel Clark, April 27, 1899 to May 7, 1974, was an officer in the British Army, known as a pioneer of military deception operations during the Second World War. His ideas for combining fictional orders of battle, visual deception and double agents helped define Allied deception strategy during the war, for which he has been referred to as the greatest British deceiver of Second World War. Clark was also instrumental in the founding of three famous military units, namely the British Commandos, the Special Air Service, and the US Rangers. Sterling's new Special Operations Unit was, at the outset, short of equipment, particularly tents and related gear, when the unit set up at Kibber Air Base. The first operation of the new SAS was to steal from a nearby well-equipped New Zealand regiment various supplies including tents, bedding, tables, chairs, and a piano. After at least four trips, they had a well-stocked camp. After a brief period of training, an initial attempt at attacking a German airfield by parachute landing on November 16, 1941 in support of Operation Crusader proved to be disastrous for the unit. Of the original 55 men, some 34 were killed, wounded or captured far from the target, after being blown off course or landing in the wrong area, during one of the biggest storms to hit the region. Escaping only with the help of the Long Range Desert Group LRDG, who were designated to pick up the unit after the attack, Sterling agreed that approaching by land under the cover of night would be safer and more effective than parachuting. As quickly as possible he organized raids on ports using this simple method, bluffing through checkpoints at night using the language skills of some of his soldiers. Under Sterling's leadership, the Lewis bomb, the first handheld dual explosive and incendiary device, was invented by Jock Lewis. American jeeps, which were able to deal with the harsh desert terrain better than other transport, were cut down, adapted and fitted with Vickers K machine guns fore and aft. Sterling also pioneered the use of small groups to escape detection. Finding it difficult to lead from the rear, Sterling often led from the front, his SAS units driving through enemy airfields and the jeeps to shoot up aircraft and crew. The first jeep-borne airfield raid occurred soon after acquiring the first batch of jeeps in June 1942, when Sterling's SAS group attacked the Italian-held Bagish airfield along with two other Axis airfields all in the same night. After returning to Cairo, Sterling collected a consignment of more jeeps for further airfield raids. His biggest success was on the night of 26-27 July 1942, when his SAS squadron, armed with 18 jeeps, raided the seedy Hainish landing strip and destroyed 37 Axis aircraft, mostly bombers and heavy transport, for the loss of two men killed. After a drive through the desert, evading enemy patrols and aircraft, Sterling and his men reached the safety of their advance camp at Karat Tartura on the edge of the Katara Depression. These hit-and-run operations eventually proved Sterling's undoing. He was captured by the Germans in January 1943 having been dubbed the Phantom Major by Field Marshal Erwin Rommel. Although Sterling escaped from the Germans, he was subsequently recaptured by the Italians, who took great delight in the embarrassment this caused to their German allies. He made four further escape attempts, before he was sent to Kolditz Castle, where he remained as a prisoner for the rest of the war. In North Africa, in the 15 months before Sterling's capture, the SAS had destroyed over 250 aircraft on the ground, dozens of supply dumps, wrecked railways and telecommunications, and had put hundreds of enemy vehicles out of action. Field Marshal Montgomery of Alamine described Sterling as mad. Quite mad. Post-war. At the end of the war the British government saw no further need for the force, and disbanded it on October 8, 1945. The following year it was decided there was a need for a long-term deep penetration commando unit, and a new SAS regiment was to be raised as part of the Territorial Army, Malayan Scouts. In 1950, a 21 SAS squadron was raised to fight in the Korean War. After three months of training in Britain, it was informed that the squadron would no longer be required in Korea, and so it instead volunteered to fight in the Malayan emergency. Upon arrival in Malaya, 
It came under the command of Mad Mike Mike Calvert, who was forming a new unit called the Malayan Scouts (SAS). Calvert had already formed one squadron from 100 volunteers in the Far East, which became a squadron. The 21 SAS squadron then became B Squadron, and after a recruitment visit to Rhodesia by Calvert, C Squadron was formed from 100 Rhodesian volunteers. In 1959 the 3rd Regiment, the 23 SAS Regiment, was formed by renaming the Reserve Reconnaissance Unit, which had succeeded MI-9, and whose members were experts in escape and evasion. MI-9, the British Directorate of Military Intelligence Section 9, was a secret department of the War Office between 1939 and 1945. During World War II it had two principal tasks, assisting in the escape of Allied prisoners of war POWs, held by the Axis countries, especially Nazi Germany, and helping Allied military personnel, especially downed airmen, evade capture after they were shot down or trapped behind enemy lines in Axis-occupied countries. During World War II, about 35,000 Allied military personnel, many helped by MI-9, escaped POW camps or evaded capture and made their way to Allied or neutral countries after being trapped behind enemy lines. Influence on other special forces Following the post-war reconstitution of the Special Air Service, other countries in the Commonwealth recognized their need for similar units. The Canadian Special Air Service Company was formed in 1947. The New Zealand Special Air Service Squadron was formed in June 1955 to serve with the British SAS in Malaya, which became a full regiment in 2011. Australia formed the first SAS company in July 1957, which became a full regiment of the Special Air Service Regiment SASR, in 1964. On its return from Malaya, the C. Rhodesian Squadron formed the basis for creation of the Rhodesian Special Air Service in 1961. The Belgian Army's Special Forces Group, which wears the same cap badge as the British SAS, traces its ancestry partly from the 5th Special Air Service of the Second World War. The French 1st Marine Infantry Parachute Regiment, 1 or RPIMA, can trace its origins to the Second World War 3rd and 4th SAS, adopting its Who Dares Wins motto. The American unit, 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta, was formed by Colonel Charles Alvin Beckwith, who served with 22 SAS as an exchange officer and recognized the need for a similar type of unit in the United States Army. The Israeli Sayeret Makkal and Shaldag units have also been modeled after the SAS, sharing its motto. Ireland's Army Ranger Wing ARW, has also modeled its training on that of the SAS. The Philippine National Police's Special Action Force was formed along the lines of the SAS, 